half in the bag. I can't stop pooping in my pants. Hello? Mr. Plinkett? Uh, Mike, are you sure this is Mr. Plinkett's new house? Uh, I think so. That's the address that he gave us. The time has come. What? To draw a line between my side of the apartment and yours. Who is that? It looks like B. Arthur. Oh, come on. Is this really necessary? Of course it is. Plinkett, you are a slob as well as a fraud. Also, when is your next review? Ugh, I thought we went over this already. I don't do the reviews. Of course you do. Uh, hello, excuse us. What? Oh, good. The boys are here to fix my VCR. You mean my VCR. It is on my side of the apartment. Oh, whatever. Jay, Mike, meet my new roommate, Palpy. Hello. Wipe your shoes. Yeah, he can't stand it when you track mud in the apartment. I like to keep this place very clean and organized. And I'm a slob. It's like we're some kind of couple that's odd. Yes, it's like that old TV show. Eight is enough. I love that show. When Disney took over, I lost everything. My pension, stock options, health insurance. They no longer had any work for me. They said my face would scare children. At first I thought they were talking about Carrie Fisher. But no, it was me. Now I am on a fixed income through Social Security. And I also claim disability for that time when Lord Vader threw me down a mine shaft. But soon I will have my revenge. When the new movies come out, I will pan them on my internet blog. Uh, you know, I think we'd like to just get started. Yep, we'll be over here. Why is he telling us all these things? He just met us. Good. Good. Reach out and strike down. Uh, well, I don't think they'll mind if we take a quick break while they argue. Yeah, uh, probably not. Oh, great. Hey, seen any movies lately? I'm trying to watch my precious Night Court tape. Night Court? That show is so old and it sucks my balls. You should be watching Breaking Bad. Everyone's talking about it on the internet. Mike, the TV's not even on. I, I know, this thing doesn't work. Well, there's no batteries in it, for one thing. So? Right, it's 918. We're headed down into the cellar where the door's just opened on its own. Give us a sign that you want to communicate with us. Nothing. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Half in the Bag, I'm Jay. And I'm Mike. And we've had a pretty busy summer, I would say. Uh, so busy, in fact, that we haven't had time to discuss a lot of movies that we saw. We saw the big, big movies. We saw the big movies, and there was a couple big ones we missed. Yeah. Uh, like Elysium, which I honestly had zero interest in. Uh, it looked very heavy-handed. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. we did see some movies, mostly smaller ones, I guess. Uh, so we're going to play Summer Movie Catch-Up now, mm -hmm. where we talk about some of the films we saw that we haven't talked about on the show. Some that we've both seen, some that I've seen and you haven't. Otherwise known as a bunch of movies no one cares about. That's not true. Well, one film that we both saw that did quite well at the box office was a, a horror movie called The Conjuring. Uh, based. It conjured up a lot of money at the box office? No one's ever made that joke yet. No, no writer in the movie review business. Did you hear that Miley Cyrus and her boyfriend broke up and they couldn't twerk it out? Anyways, the film was called The Conjuring. Yes. And it was, quote, based on a, quote, true story. <laughs> uh, of course. Of things that happened in a house to some people. Yeah. And I was actually looking forward to this film um, after seeing the trailer. I'm probably one of the few people who have seen this movie who actually have heard of the demonologists Ed and Lorraine Warren. Uh, I, have a, I have a little fascination with, with 
hauntings and poltergeists and, and ghost hunting. I guess you could say it's a guilty pleasure of mine, which is the best way to describe that um, because most people don't believe in that and they think it's hooey and, and hokey. Do you know why they think that? Why is that, Jay? Because it is. Hey, no. But this film was based on a, a private, never before talked about case about their adventures in this house and this family and their hauntings. And the, the film actually starts off with a different story that's from their uh, archives of hauntings where they investigate a demon doll. Mm, yes. Um, a haunted doll. And we actually have it here. Yeah, if you're looking for a perfect example of Hollywood producers saying, oh, we've got to change that, this would be it. Because the doll in the movie it actually looks much more detailed and scary than this home version of the doll. This is a cheapo promo piece. But yeah, it's like the true story, this has nothing to do with the main part of the movie. It's just kind of a little opening to introduce the two characters. But um, the, the opening is like there's two college girls that own a doll. And, um, and, and then they're like, here's the doll. And it's like, it's, it's like this, this horror movie doll. And then, and it's based on a true thing where it was a Raggedy Ann doll. Yeah. And, and so in the movie, it's comical. And, and at first <laughs> I was like, oh no, you know, like this is gonna suck. Yeah. But the movie delivers on scares, delivers on creepy moments and, and, and it is, it is an entertaining, well-made horror movie. It's November 1st, 1971. I'm sitting here with Carolyn Perrin, who, with her family, has been experiencing supernatural occurrences. You picking up anything in here, hon? Something awful happened here, Ed. What is it? Um, it's its own movie, but it's just, yeah, really sort of classy. Which is surprising, because I know the guys that made it were the guys that started out with Saw. Have you ever seen any of those Saw movies? Uh, no. I saw the first one in the theater because it was Halloween and we wanted to see a horror movie. And we were laughing our heads off about halfway through and for the rest of the movie. Um, so I, I was not expecting restraint from those guys, but I haven't seen Insidious, the movie they did before this. So I don't know, maybe that's similar to you know, Conjuring 2. But... You know, I saw Insidious because Insidious 2 is out now. Yeah. Um, and I... I have no memory of seeing uh, Insidious. You could, you could insert any movie you've ever seen into the beginning of that sentence, though, and I make have the exact it. same statement. I own it, and I look at the back of the box, and I see all the photos, and I read the synopsis. I can't remember a single thing about it. <laughs> the, apparently, there was a kid in it who was in a coma. I have no... It's like a lost time when you get abducted by a UFO. It's like, from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., I saw Insidious. <laughs> And I may have also been on a UFO. I'm sick of you and your offensive odors. You and your grand plans to start a galactic empire. We can't even get back to the fucking moon. How are you going to take over the galaxy? I will find a way. With the dark side of the force, anything is possible. Oh, you got to find a way to keep me off of your side? Huh? I'm on your side now. What? Oh, yeah? Oh, huh. There. there. Ah! There's someone here that would like to talk to you. There's something horrible happening in my house. The Conjuring is based on a true story with numerous quotation marks around every word <laughs> I just said. And, and so I, I, I actually, I'm very, very, um, I lean towards horror movies that are based on true stories. I don't know why, even though most true horror movie stories are probably made up anyways. Um, I, I just, it, it, to me, like a haunting movie, a movie about ghosts or, or like a haunting kind of story, if it's not based on something that's true, it, it doesn't do anything for me yeah. in terms of scares. Even if, even if you know with a movie like The Conjuring, there's as much made up shit as there would be in a movie that isn't supposedly based on a true story? Yeah. Okay. I'll still be like, oh, maybe that's, the, you know, like the Amity Amityville Horror, you know? Yeah. It's like those people like, well, we made it up. No, we didn't. Well, we really didn't make it up. It's true. No, it's not. And yeah. The next family that moves in, they're like, the house well, is fine. Yeah. And, and so, 
But, you know, because there's that element that it could have been true. Like, I've seen a movie called uh, A Haunting in Connecticut. Oh, yeah, that classic. Yeah, based on a true story. And then I watched it in the theater, and, like, the, the most crazy, crazy shit happens in that movie. <laughs> like, there's bodies coming out of the wall, and it's like, Wah! and yeah. it's like, the real story is like, the house these people moved into once had a, a funeral home in the basement and somebody's door slammed closed. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, you know. So, yeah. so then there's, there's, there's this, the phrase, based on, on a true story, based upon true events, or the real catcher is inspired by true mm. events. We have to get out of here. That's not gonna help. This thing has latched itself to your family. Uh, we never seen nothing like this. <laughs> coming with you. No way. I can't lose you. Uh, but yeah, The Conjuring works. Uh, I have What? These two like The Conjuring? <sighs> this show has gone to shit. Half in the bag has jumped the Sharknado. Yeah, I did a thing. Oh, that was terrible. The, the atmosphere and the way it's executed. I really liked, I, I was really uh, happy to see Lily Taylor in this. I like her a lot. I think she's a good actress, and I can't think of the last thing I even saw her in. But um, she's really good. This is the mom in this. Lily Tomlin? Lily Taylor. Lily Tomlin was the incredible shrinking woman. She was. Now she's the incredibly dead woman. She's not dead. Damn it. <laughs> I hoped she was. <laughs> So Jay, did you see any other films that I did not see? I did, I did. I saw the the Nicholas Wending Reffin flop, Only God Forgives. This movie is is, is uh, becoming sort of notorious for people hating it. Really? Yeah. When I was pregnant with you, it was strange you were different. They wanted me to terminate, but I wouldn't. I don't understand you. And I never will. It's sort of, well, it's sort of been divisive, I guess, you could say. It's a, people either really love it or really hate it. And the consensus is that if you really love it, then you are pretentious and you're just pretending to like it so you seem smart. Mm. And if you really hate it, then that's because uh, you're, you're a, a mouth breather that just likes Transformers movies. Mm. There's no middle ground with Only God Forgives. Well, why don't um, you uh, tell everyone the, just the general premise, because I know nothing about this movie. It's, it's essentially a revenge movie. Uh, it's a revenge story, but it's a revenge story told from the perspective of someone that doesn't believe in the revenge. He's sort of being forced into it. It's Ryan Gosling's brother gets killed and he has a very sort of overbearing mother that sort of forces him into taking revenge for the death of, of her other son. So uh, Ryan Gosling is this very sort of passive character in the movie. He doesn't say a lot. A lot of the movie is this. There's a lot of that. Uh, and Drive was a very slow moving movie too, but that's one where y you're sort of engaged. It's sort of hypnotic. Uh, but this one, there are parts where it just feels deadly slow. Uh, so the movie looks great, which I guess isn't surprising, coming from Nicholas Winding Refn. Uh, it's set in Bangkok. There's lots of uh, red lighting, lots of neon. It sort of looks like like you're traveling through hell. Uh, and that's sort of the, the what the movie is, the sort of descent into hell, descent into violence. Uh, a lot of sort of like a correlation between sex and violence. There's lots of... Uh, uh, Ryan Gosling doesn't fuck with his dick in this movie. He fucks with his hands. There's lots of hand imagery in this movie. Uh, so if you want to see a movie where Ryan Gosling essentially has dicks for hands, this may be your only option. I don't know. So what happens in the end of the film? Just tell me because I'm never going to watch it. Oh, uh, Ryan Gosling gets his hands chopped off. So he can no longer fuck anymore. Exactly. It's sort of a, 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 a emasculation, a castration metaphor. Um, I think he, he wants to fuck his mom. Uh, his mom is great in the movie, by the way. The actress that plays his mom is really good. It does not look like they will ever fix that VCR. Your lack of confidence is your weakness. And your faith in your friends is yours. Uh, yeah, yeah.
So there's a lot going on in this movie. It's very heavy, very visual dependent, very slow moving, with bursts of violence, and everyone scratches their head at the end. Exactly. Says, what did I just watch? That's exactly what it is. You want to fight? Well, I saw Woody Allen's uh, uh, fifth feature this year and 677th feature in his career called Blue Jasmine. Oh, and how, what did you think of Blue Jasmine? Blue Jasmine was, was a quality film, Jay. Okay. Um, it starred Kate Blanchett, uh, and uh, it had some other miscellaneous uh, uh, celebrity appearances by Louis C.K. and um, uh, the guy who's Ford Fairlane, the Tony Danza guy who, who cusses out you, women. You remember Ford Fairlane, but you don't remember his actual name? I have little faith in these I two. They look as if they just walked out of a homeless shelter, especially that one. Although he does look kind of hot with a beard now. I want to say it's, I want to say Tony Danza. No, Tony Danza's in the new Joseph Gordon-Levitt movie, though. That's right. Tony Danza's also on a TV show called Who's the Boss? But he's not really the boss. He's a maid. He met me at a party and swept me off my feet. I fell in love with the name Jasmine. Uh, you know, I have never been to San Francisco. I'll be staying with my sister. Jasmine! Oh, my God. Look at you. <laughs> Your place is homey. Oh, the flight was bumpy. The food was awful. I mean, you'd think, first class. I, I thought you were tapped out. I'm dead broke. Really, I mean, the government took everything. All I can say is you look great. Oh, uh, now who's lying? <laughs> so it's a, good, it's a good character movie, character study, and she descends into madness mm. and um, uh, ends up on a park bench talking to herself like a crazy person at the end. <laughs> uh, not no, spoilers, but um, yeah, it, you know, it's, it's, it's not an action-packed movie. It's not a, a, uh, a very funny comedy. It's just a movie driven by performances, good characters, and people saying things and yelling. <laughs> and everyone's, everyone was like raving about Andrew Dice Clay's performance in it. That's, I'm curious, I haven't seen the movie yet, but I'm curious about that. He, Do you think it's, they're, they're raving because it's Andrew Dice Clay and they're just surprised? Okay. Yeah, and be, I don't know. There's nothing noteworthy about it, in my opinion. He's there. How about Louis C.K., how is he in it? Louis C.K. is good in it too. You know, he, he plays himself and he, you know, he's not overly funny in it. He's, he's not playing a c comedic role. He's natural, um, but really the, the one who steals the show is Kate Blanchett. She's just great in it. Uh, she plays this neurotic, insane woman who has real problems. <laughs> and uh, Is she the Woody Allen surrogate in this movie, basically? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a little different, but essentially. Okay. I mean, every movie of his is the same. But uh, <laughs> You know, it's, he's one of those people where you say every movie of his is the same, which is partially true, but I still like, I don't know, I haven't seen all of them, of course, but the ones I've seen, it's like a warm, it's like cuddling up under a warm blanket. Yeah, There's yeah. something comforting about it. It just seems Except like... Except for when they're total shit, which does happen sometimes. Is there anything you want that you don't have? Sweetheart, it's beautiful. When your sister had all that money, she wanted nothing to do with you. Now that she's broke, all of a sudden she's moving in. She's not just broke, she's all screwed up. Cool enough, you know? You hear me? How? Excuse me. Are you talking to me? Jin just told me all about you. One minute you're on top of the world, the next... <laughs> guy turns out to be a crook. Well, how long are you planning on staying with Ginger? No one wants to get out of here as fast as I do. I'm sure this is a big come down from what you're used to. You'll be very happy to know that I lost every cent of my own money. Her husband was a slick operator. I was there a week. I knew the guy was hitting on a girlfriend. I said, I, I, I can't, I can't, oh, I can't. Yeah, I'd like to see some of his total shit movies and see why they're total shit. Because mm. I'm not really sure. I mean, I've seen a lot of his earlier movies, of course. You know, um, uh, Sleeper and oh, uh, Sleeper's great. Annie Hall and all, all those all those old Woody Allen movies. And and there seemed to be more variety. And then the recenter ones just seem more like just relationship movies or people movies, just talking and yelling it's, it's, and fighting. Yeah, it's and, people coming into a room and talking and, yeah. and, and having mildly witty banter. Right, relationships, I'm yeah. arguing about this. Not all of them are like that, but a sure, lot of them are. Sure. So. 
you choose losers because that's what you think you deserve. And that's why you'll never have a better life. She okay. doesn't care about you. She's a phony. Can you please not fight in here? Don't think I can take it. For some reason, my Xanax isn't kicking in. Anxiety, nightmares, and a nervous breakdown. There's only so many traumas a person can withstand until they take to the streets and start screaming. Woody Allen needs to make uh, the next Transformers movie. Oh, that would be amazing. Like, just, Woody, <laughs> go do this. Like, No, have him write it. Right. Say, here's the premise. Yeah. And give it to him and just see what happens. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> the Transformers. They're transforming into something new. I would have loved to have seen him direct Only God Forgives. So let me tell you one movie I, I did not see this summer uh, was one a lot of people were talking about mm -hmm. uh, called Sharknado. What is that about? It's about a tornado full of sharks. I did not see it. I, I'm assuming you didn't see it either. No, I heard. I heard all the uh, the, the excitement. About There's a Shark lot of Day. excitement. There is a lot of buzz, and it doesn't make a lot of sense to me because I have no interest in intentionally shitty movies. The best bad movies are the ones where the people making it didn't realize they were making a bad movie when there's like a sincerity to yeah. it. And everything about Sharknado just felt completely like phony. I had this uh, this feeling that everyone that was all talking about Sharknado mostly were people that had not heard of the Asylum before. Yeah, that might be part of it. Yeah. Like you just hear the title, Sharknado. Oh, it's about a tornado full of sharks. Like, that sounds fun. Yeah. But when you know that the Asylum's behind it, because, I mean, The Asylum produced a hundred other films similar. It was Sharktopus versus right. Octagon and Octopus versus Sharktopus. Yeah. Sharktopolis versus Octopopolis. Yeah, so so you're right, Jay. Um, I, I kind of, maybe it's a really funny movie, but it, it is intentionally bad. It's going for a camp factor of people going, well, I'll watch this. It has a weird name. Yeah. But uh, a, a really good bad movie is a movie that's made by people that weren't intending to make a bad movie. It's uh, it's schadenfreude, it's it's fun to laugh at others' failure. Yes. Or find enjoyment in it. Um, movies like Troll 2, um, The Room is, is probably the best example. And on that note, we should talk about a film we saw recently called Things. Uh, actually, we didn't see this film recently. I've seen this film now three times, unfortunately. Yes. And uh, this is a film from Canada uh, about something. Hmm. Hmm. See what we have here. Mm hmm. I can't even begin to describe this. Well, we should say, since we first saw things, maybe a year ago, year and a half ago, uh, we've been saying we need to do something special with things. And we kept putting it off because we didn't know what to do with it as far as a discussion goes. And I think we finally just decided, like pulling off a band aid. We're just gonna delve into it. We're just gonna go for it. Yeah. Just get it over with. It, it cannot be categorized in any way. Um, so we sat down with our dear friend, Rich Evans, and watched things. <laughs> so things is probably one of the worst movies ever made. Uh, would you agree? Um, I would remove probably. Okay, it's definitely the worst movie that has ever been made. Uh, you don't really watch it, you don't really view it as a movie so much as an object. It's just a thing that you can say, well, now I've seen that. Help. I'm done. I'm done. Help me. He's, he's ADRing over him and you can still hear his old audio? <laughs> That's a thing that happens? <laughs> yeah, you know, I. it's a weird thing. It's, a, it's an interesting thing with So Bad They're Good movies um, because while it is the worst movie, possibly the worst movie ever made on almost every level, it is somewhat watchable and fascinating to where other movies that you see that are very competently made are just, you just can't finish them. Yeah. This, you're just so oddly fascinated by it that you continue to watch it. I'm gonna have to cauterize this. Have to mend your hand together. This is gonna hurt me a lot more than it's gonna hurt you. 
It also improves when you've seen it before and you're watching it with someone who has not seen it before, just to watch their reaction and see that slow realization of, of how baffling and confused they're gonna be for the entire runtime. <laughs> I can't even comprehend what's going on. Yeah, yeah, I, I think the very, uh, this was my third time watching this and, and that's, that says something. <laughs> there are a lot of really good movies that I have not seen three times. Mm -hmm. But it's just, it's just one of those movies where you just yell at the screen because it makes no sense at all. But at the same time, it sort of makes sense. It's not a two hour long, like, like abstract art movie where nothing makes sense there. It's like it's teasing you with, with some semblance of uh, reality or coherence. It's just teasing you with like, oh, this, this leads to this. This sort of makes sense. And you're like, what? That, and then they pull it away yeah. right as you think you sort of understand what's happening. Well, it's time to take you to Grizzly Flats. And after that, you're going to Los Angeles Institution. I'm telling you, they're hiding. They're hiding, I'm telling you. If Beavis and Butthead wrote and directed a movie, this would be it. Actually, a better example, because this is a Canadian film, so a better example would be if Bob and Doug McKenzie made a movie. Beauty this idea. movie was shot in 3B. Three beers and it looks good, eh? <laughs> Well, let's talk about the plot of things before we talk about the technical aspects so that people have uh, some frame of reference as to what we're talking about. You and I have seen the movie numerous times. Uh, we just showed our friend Rich Evans for the first time, as we mentioned before. Um, he thoroughly enjoyed the film. Oh yes, he loved it. Look what they've done to me. Come over here. Basically what it boils down to is these guys go to their friend's house. But it's, it's, it's almost like the setup, uh, like a cabin in the woods setup. They, they vaguely mention Evil Dead. They say, yeah. this reminds me of that, mo that weird movie where those weird things happen. They're, and they're, they're referring to Evil Dead. Uh, they go there and they're fascinated by simple things like running water. Running water and everything up here. Uh, refrigerator. They, they find a tape recorder in the refrigerator. There's a tape recorder in the freezer as well as a book. <laughs> a recorder in the freezer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they take those out and they put their jackets in the freezer yes. for some oh, reason. Yeah. Throw this in the freezer. In storage, maybe. It's a good place for it. And then the one guy makes sure or, or out of curiosity checks to see that the mini fish thing on the wall is made of plastic. Uh, so, and then later on, the, the, the one guy pours water into his beer bottle. Yes. Uh, so the house they go to is Don's brother, Doug. It's his house. Or Doug's brother, Don. One or the other. Whoever owns the house, he has a wife who's pregnant and sick. I brought you some of these to help you ease the pain. Thanks. I hope they work. I feel like I'm going to die. Uh, they, they couldn't have a baby. Listen, we couldn't have a child. So they went to a crazy mad doctor who does weird experiments in town. And that doctor did an experiment on her that got her pregnant. Or something. Uh, but he's a mad doctor, he doesn't know what he's doing, so she apparently gives birth to tons and tons of little mutant ant bitey creatures. Things. Things. What the fuck are you talking about? And then the things take over the house and our characters wander around and occasionally worry about it in between uh, sitting in the kitchen and wanting to drink beer or take naps. Mm, the things, they sit on the, the stove or they sit on the toilet or they sleep in the basement. Mm -hmm. that, that's it. And then, uh, then they kill them all with a non-functioning chainsaw <laughs> and uh, a, a drill. A drill, yeah. That becomes unplugged and then the main character is unable to re-plug it in. He can't figure out how to plug the drill back in. Yeah, that's good. Leave it there. It feels like they were drunk every aspect, uh, through every aspect of filmmaking. They were drunk when they wrote it. They were drunk when they shot it and acted in it. They were drunk when they edited it and did the sound design. See, that's the thing. That's the thing that gets me, is because it's very easy just to take this movie called Things and go, 
wow, these guys were super high when they made this movie, or they were super drunk, ha ha ha. Um, you don't make a movie super drunk. And that's the thing, I think it's just gross incompetence because you, you, you get drunk, you're drunk for a little bit, and if you're that drunk, yeah. you're done making the movie after an hour and you, you wanna lay down, you wanna throw Well, they up. lay down multiple times in the movie. They do, but they completed the movie. That's true. And they were able to operate the camera, they were able to, uh. and well, <laughs> that, I guess that's questionable, but it's almost like, it's like a movie that you made when you were in eighth grade where you're, you're, you're stealing ideas from movies that are popular at the time or that you were inspired by, yeah. and you make it as a little kid and you don't understand what you're doing. And that's what it feels that these, I, I don't know, these guys are probably in their 20s or something. They're not that old. Old enough to be horrifically balding. Everyone alive in this house knows that there ain't no beers. Um, but still not, not young enough to be that naive. Yeah. Um, well, it also feels like a movie that's being made up as they go along. Uh, not just in the the story, but also in the editing, where they're ADRing. It almost feels like, uh, like you said, a movie you make when you're a kid. I remember editing movies when I was a kid, where I would be mixing in music and ADR and sound effects as I was dubbing it to a, a second generation VHS tape, where you're trying to keep up with the movie. Mm -hmm. And that's what this feels like, where all the ADR is terrible. There's certain lines that just aren't ADR'd. You see their mouths moving, but there's no lines there. And the sound effects are someone in a microphone going Yeah. You got them real good. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, joke's on you. Hey, did you hear that? I see a bunch of Canucks that are inbred and dim-witted who decided to make a movie because they were inspired by other horror genre films. Um, really very, very heavily influenced Evil Dead. Um, Evil Dead 2, probably, um, because you have the, the tape recorder in the beginning mm -hmm. uh, that plays back the mad scientist's logs. Um, you have- Is that what's on the tape recorder? I think so. He's oh. talking about his experiments. Okay. So it's Because there's a book that's about like the cult, uh, that the too. occult or it's, something. It's all very reminiscent of when they find the tape recorder in Evil Dead. Right. That, and, and, um, and then definitely at the end when he goes ash with the chainsaw slash drill. Ah, uh, they woke up again, the bastards. Uh, 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 uh. Which does not have that amazing drill bit on it. No. It, it has a, a boring dri drill bit that looks stupid. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, he's covered with soot on his face. Yeah. And he has a blue shirt on. And then um, the creatures to me really look like um, aliens, uh, specifically the queen alien mouth. Oh, yeah. And then there's the whole, the whole sequence where the power goes out. Come on, give me a beer. Hey, what happened? The lights went out. And everything goes to red, yeah. which is very reminiscent of Aliens, uh, when half the movie is lit in just red, um, when when the the station's power goes out. And so I'm, I'm thinking like like it just it really felt like me being a kid making a movie with a video camera, inspired by all these movies that I'd seen, yeah. like just copying all these elements and just trying to make some kind of movie from it. And it and and it's so bizarre that that 35 year old men are doing it. <laughs> With the same level of competency as a 12 year old. As a 12 year old. Yeah. Literal <laughs> level of competency as a 12 year old. Yeah. I mean, maybe Barry J. Gillis is a very nice man. I, do you know these people? Jay? I do not. I, well, I know Barry J. Gillis has gone on to have a music career. I was only trying to ease the tension. Now there's only pain. Uh, he, he has a song and a music video that he directed himself. And it's uh, up to the standards that you would expect from the person behind things. I'm on the road to sadness. Well, that, that, that to me is the most fascinating element of things. Uh, the camera work, the lighting, all that is shoddy, crappy. It's eight millimeter film, it looks junky, but you know, you can you can watch a movie and go, wow, that 
that shot looks bad or that set looks bad um, or whatever. But um, your film image, that's the hard thing to get. Yeah. The audio is a lot easier. And for some bizarre reason, <laughs> which, which I don't even, I don't, I can't even fathom why. <laughs> they, it seemed like they did live ADR dubbing. Yes. Like a guy with a microphone sat there. And then when a line came up that he sort of remembered, he yelled it into a microphone. And if it fucked up, they just kept going. Yeah. Uh, give me back my... But they didn't record everyone at once live. Because no. you can hear awkward cuts in the sound when they're cutting to the other actor's line. It's very weird. And another theory, too, that I had mm. was they have clean production sound when they're on, uh, uh, when they're on the river. Mm -hmm. Help me! Help! Can you hear me? Help! Hey, buddy. Help! You all right? And he's climbing up on the bridge, and there's a guy there. And then, but all the stuff in the house, like 90% of it's gone. Yeah. Or they don't have sound. So, so they had the, the ability to record live sound on some sort of piece of equipment. Did they have audio tape and lose it all? Yeah. Or it all burned in a fire except for this last reel of it. And that was just pieces of takes here and there. Yeah. Or... I didn't hear nothing at all. I just didn't want you to pour any whiskey on me. Lost your train of thought, didn't I? <laughs> uh, I think I'll have another drink. You, you think about the people involved with that movie, and that's the best they could do. I don't want to give this movie any credit, because I want, I want to say I hate this movie. I love this movie. Uh, the first time I saw it, I could not stand it. Mm. And it, it, it has become slightly more tolerable upon each viewing. Mm. Watch it with someone who hasn't seen it before. Keep track of how many times they say what. What? Oh, they forgot to dub over that line. <laughs> What's going on? There, uh, I guess we should talk about the, the appearance by Amber Lynn, the, the 80s porn oh, she's, star. Yeah, an 80s porn star. She shows up as a news anchor and they keep cutting to her throughout the movie. Yeah, they film her in someone, someone's basement in the rec room where there's, there happens to be a couple of shelves with the VCR on it mm -hmm. uh, and a TV, and that looks like a news station. But then she, she uh, turns it over to her partner, mm -hmm. and he's in a, uh, a chair similar to this one, but with more flowers on it. Yeah. And he's awkwardly framed in the bottom corner. More details will follow soon. Back to Johnny. Report that oh my God, he's back. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so then you got to ask yourself, what was the Amberlynn scenes after the fact, after they got some interest by a distribution company to put this film on, on the VHS tape? Um, or was it part of the initial production? Was it a thing to stretch the, the running time out? Yeah. Because it, in hindsight, it's so ineptly shot, it almost matches the original footage. Yeah. It does kind of feel like one of those things where it's like, oh, well, this is a low-budget horror movie. It sucks. But if you had some sort of name involved, yeah. okay, we'll get a porn star. Yeah, and say she stars in it. Yeah. The box does say she stars in it. Yeah, they prominently mention her and Barry J. Gillis. One of the most baffling scenes is when they watch the TV. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. Leave it there. They all go into the living room, and then uh, he flips the channels. Half the channels are pornos. They go to make sandwiches, <laughs> but all they had was just regular bread. So who's your favorite character in things? There's so many to choose from. I think the Mad Doctor is my favorite. He's my favorite because he can't stop smiling. Yeah. He knows He knows what's going He's on. He's somebody's friend who they yeah. said, can you play this doctor for on a Saturday? Mm -hmm. Can you hurry up and be in the movie and just shout things? You should be ashamed of what they've done. <laughs> you should. Uh. If... If I were to say, if I were to name a movie that was as close to a cinematic nightmare, <laughs> it, 
it would be this mm -hmm. in many ways. Yeah. And you could say like, you it's know, a descent into madness. Some, some movie, you know, is, is, is a nightmare, uh, you know, like, but this really is, it's, it's like a dream that doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. a, a, a very, very bad dream. All these things you talk about as if they're a negative are reasons I enjoy the movie. It's it's definitely a movie that you need to watch uh, and then rewatch with someone who hasn't seen it. It's yeah. more entertaining uh, when you watch it with someone who hasn't seen it before because you're sort of feeding off of their frustration and confusion yeah. and hatred of you for making them watch it. This is now the way of things. This chalice shall rule this apartment. How come you have way fewer chores than me? I have less ones, but they are more difficult. They're difficult? Dusting's not difficult. Doing the dishes is way harder than dusting. Wow, they sure do argue a lot. Yeah, they argue like a married couple. But which one's the woman? Is it the one wearing a dress? Jesus Christ, you even got me taking out the goddamn garbage. I have dealt with enough garbage. I was in the Star Wars prequels. Remember those? <laughs> well, you... well, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that, and I'm certainly not doing these. Plinket, this will no longer work. I want you out of my apartment. Fine, you were a lousy roommate anyway. Good luck paying the rent on your fixed income, you old hack. Uh, oh. Once more, I will place an ad on Craigslist. Shit. Well, that was a disaster. Guess I've got no place to live now, other than the homeless shelter. You know, someone needs to pay us for the work that we did on your VCR today. Mike, show Mr. Plinkett some compassion. Pay us? Hey, what if I lived at the VCR repair shop? No. Uh, that's not a good idea, Mr. Plinkett, because we have cats mm -hmm. and you have that horrible cat allergy. I don't have cat allergies. I love pussy. Oh. Oh, well then the VCR repair shop is infested with cockroaches. Uh, yeah, they're everywhere. My old house is full of cockroaches. I love little guys. We eat off the same plates. Ew. Uh, there's nowhere to sleep. I'll bring a sleeping bag. Uh, you'll scare our customers away because you smell like urine. I'll take a shower. We hate you. I hate myself too. Blanket. Do not forget your mail. Oh, huh. it's a letter from my lawyer. Lawyer? Mr. Plinkett, you have a lawyer? Yeah, is he suing us? Oh God, I hope not. I would sue us. Yeah. Was it weird when the guy made the mail float over here like that? A little weird, little weird, yeah. but I'm okay with it. Okay. Oh, looks like my case is finally going to trial. The judge approved it. Case? Uh, uh, who are you suing, Mr. Plinkett? Oh, well, see, I, I recently discovered that my house was so old, it was placed on the National Registry of Historic Buildings. Hmm. The city of Milwaukee didn't take that into account when they tore it down. So now I can sue those bastards for ten million dollars. Ten million dollars? 
<laughs> Mr. Plankett, you know this conversation we were just having about us not wanting you to stay in the VCR repair shop? Well, mm -hmm. I think you might have misheard us. Yeah, uh, yeah. What we were trying to say was that you weren't unwelcome. Yeah, it's a double negative, which means we would love to have you stay at the VCR repair shop while you wait to give us $10, ten million. Ten, 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 I mean, get your $10, ten, million, ten dollars million dollars. And ignore all that ten. stuff about uh, smelling like urine. I love the smell of you. urine. Yeah, it's yeah, great. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Uh, and, and, I was just saying the other day that yeah, there wasn't enough urine smell in the VCR repair right, shop. Right. And you could bring your cockroach friends too. Right? Yeah, we love those little guys just like you. Yeah, we, uh, yeah. we have them over for movie nights. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, their yeah. favorite movie is Joe's Apartment. Yeah, and, and, and we, we and Joe versus the volcano. Oh, and, and uh, GI Joe too. Oh, they love movies with Joe in the title. Yeah, no one can explain it. And you know, and we would hope that you would take into account our generosity of spirit when you receive your ten mi mi million dollar uh, settlement from the city of Milwaukee, and hope that you would share share mostly all of it, all of it with us for uh, the kindness of us letting you stay in the VCR repair shop. Oh, oh, that's great. Oh, hold on, I have to fart. This was unexpected. Oh, boy. I'm taking new medication. It makes me very gassy. Yeah. Okay.